Uh, Knocker Gavin is backing ARKK. <laughs> it's a real reverse mindset world up here. So anyways, um, we're going to dig into this. While we're doing this, what I recommend people do is you kind of follow along. If you go to the Wolf account and you click in, it's the link in the bio for the Wolf account is marketmadness.co. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm also happy to go ahead and maybe like pin something up here. Andrew, I saw you tweeted out. Yeah, here we go. Uh, Andrew tweeted this out pretty recently. I just pinned it up top. You can go up there. Take the five minutes. You're in the space already. You might as well shoot for 10K. Uh, the person who won last year was no expert. They were not an invest, you know, investment advisor or anything. They just they just played. They played and luck was on their side, I suppose, and social sentiment as well. And who knows? You know, Palantir won last year. You never know what's going to win. Everyone thought it was going to be Bitcoin. Uh, or Tesla. And here we go. Palantir ran the table. So let's dive into it. Uh, we're going to start out fake. Uh, you were on here first. So I'll go to you first. Do you want to talk cool. about what your pick is, how you feel in the first round here, second round areas, and we can roll from there and, and why you definitely. It? Yeah, I can, I can, I can get through this pretty quick. Uh, my pick is Mara. It's kind of a, it's kind of a personal like pick of mine. I've had this play myself personally. I've been, I've been accumulating it and holding it for a year and a half. Um, they are a United States Bitcoin miner. They're on pace to become the largest public miner in 2022. Uh, some analysts have said that Bitcoin miners are actually a better bet than Bitcoin itself, potentially. Um, just recently, um, an analyst named Jonathan Peterson uh, put out a buy rate in a $51 price target. I think as of after hours trading, I haven't looked in a little while, but I think it was like around 20 to 29 when market closed today. Um on track to be the largest publicly traded miner by end of this year um, with deposits paid on more of the BTC miners than any of its peers, such as Riot, Hut, um, you know, these machines are specifically designed to mine cryptocurrencies uh, and they're more power intensive than the typical GPUs as well. Um, That's really sort of like the background of Mara. Um, Their fleet of miners is expected to grow to 199,000 miners by end of this year uh from more than thirty thousand currently so they've got a lot uh they got a lot of of, um, positive sentiment going forward i think they've got a good future i'm i've been very bullish on them since you know last summer uh was it last summer no it's been longer than that it was last fall it was fall 20 fall of 2020 was when i first got into it um i had been scalping it all summer long uh the prior to that, you know, when it was a penny stock around 97 cents, I wish I had gone long all those times that I scalped it over a dollar five. Um, but I didn't, and I got about a, I still hold the $3 average on one account and an 11 on the other. And, um, that's, that is Mara. That's my pick. Um, you want me to go into my bracket quick? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Um, I'm going to start with, uh, the top left. I have Tesla beating new Tanix. I don't even know what this company does. That's the 16 seed. Um, you know, the ones against 16s are usually a pretty easy call. Um, Boeing beating Upstart. No, actually, no, I have Upstart losing to uh, beating Boeing because I think with Boeing just recently with the news and stuff, I know I'm kind of going on a limb there thinking that people are actually going to like take that into consideration when they make the pick, but whatever. Uh, Celsius Holdings. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of people that push this stock so i have paypal beating that one i've got airbnb beating facebook uh redfin losing to c nvidia beating shop palantir beating reality income amazon losing to square um in that bracket and i'll i'll make this short i'll just kind of talk about the ones in that bracket that are actually like relevant so eventually i have paypal and tesla going at it in the final 16 i think it was cool that two of like Two Elon-related plays are going to be, at least in my opinion, making it that far. Tesla moving on from there against NVIDIA, which beats out Square uh, in that final 16, with NVIDIA upsetting Tesla to make it to the final. Um, In the bottom left, I have Ethereum beating Flux. Unique Unicorns, uh, Fintwit's going to come out and have them beat out the Mutant Ape Yacht Club. That will be an insane upset, even though they're 7 and 10. Uh, I don't know. Bitcoin obviously goes on. Doge goes on against She Survives. Again, with Ashley's voter base, I think that She Survives takes out um, Doge and goes against... Uh, I, 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 you think Doge loses to some random NFT? 
I do. I do. We'll have to see. I know that the I know the Doge community is very very heavy. That would, that would, that's more that's more of a that's more of like a personal pick of mine. Do you know who's backing Doge though? I I mean I've I've been around no, no, for no, no, how much yeah, Doge does Dragon yes. Capital own? We can't we can't <laughs> talk about that. Okay. But you I can talk it. about it because you're not Gorgavin. Oh, that's oh, true. Oh, okay, 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 okay. They own 11 bots on the floor. They own nice. the floor. So eventually, oh, eventually it gets to the final four aspect of that bottom left, and Board Ape, Board Ape Yacht Club goes against Bitcoin. That's one of the biggest matchups that I have on here. Um, and eventually, Board Ape Yacht Club loses to in, in NVIDIA. Like I said, the NVIDIA makes it to the does make it to the final. On the top right, okay, let's get to mine. Mara does beat Lowe's, but I'm absolutely going to lose to Apple. There is no chance for Mara. Uh, you know it, and I know it. Um, I've got GME beating out PL, Spot losing to AMC, which puts GME and AMC apes against each other. That's another super high-profile one that I can't wait to see. Uh, D-Walk is going to be this one that I'm like really like curious to see happen because it's got the meme behind it. Um, it, it's, I know that it's Sims play. I can I know a few of these and who has them, uh, that's Sims play. Uh, it's going to beat LTHM and go against Google in the, in the, in the sweet 16. Um, and it, I have, and again, I know people are going to probably freak out. I have D-Walk beating Google to go to the final, uh, or to the elite eight. <laughs> um, oh Spy boy. Beats- Spy beats ERX in the final 32. No, no, no. Fake, fake. Do you yeah. have a social account, Truth? Do you have it? I do. I actually got through. I got oh, through. Oh, you got through? Okay. Lately, lately, you it glitches. It won't even... It errors when you try to post a truth. Like, do you post my, lies I, I or just even, truth? I can't even truth. So, what? Oh, okay. Do you- I knew when I got it, I was going to look at it for five minutes and get bored of it and go back to Twitter. I was never, like, going to be active on it. So it's sort of a meme to just have it on my phone. Um, Sark, Gergavin, uh, beats out uh, Ark and then also beats out VTSAX to go against Spy in the Sweet 16 where it loses to Spy. Boo. I know, I know, I know. Uh, XL you, you, you are you are not ready for the. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens. I've got gold going against liquid gold XLE, uh, an oil play against a gold play. Uh, that's a fun Yo, one. What? XLE is gold. What? Isn't XLE? Uh, isn't that with oh, WTI crude? Am I am I missing something there? Yeah. No, are. it's it's en- it's energy companies. Yeah, it's an energy deal. XLE. Oh shit! Okay, I see that now. Am I thinking XLF? That's financials. That's, That's financials. Okay. Yeah, the goal okay. is GLD. I was completely wrong on that. I had an XL play uh, last year when, or last September when oil was moving, and I thought it was XLE. That's why I got so excited to put it against gold. My bad. I didn't even look at the name when I clicked that one. I saw, oh, XLE. I'm clicking that because I want it to go against gold. Um, Spy and SQQQ go on in the Elite Eight. Spy wins, goes against Apple in the Final Four. Apple wins to the final, and NVIDIA wins the entire thing. That's that's it. It's a popular pick, NVIDIA. I gotta the- put I gotta put on for my boy Traders Paradise because I know he has NVIDIA, and people have been people have been making uh, huge gains on NVIDIA. It's it's a it's a favorite in FinTwit uh, for calls. So uh, I think that NVIDIA is going to get really far, and I think they're going to go all the way. No, no. I think you took out Sark too early. I, do you think I took out Sark too early? I guess we'll yeah. find out. Sark should have <laughs> never been taken out. Sark will win this. Mm-hmm. So a quick rundown. My final four. Board API Club, NVIDIA, Apple, Spy, Apple, and NVIDIA in the final. NVIDIA winning. That's that's my that's my whole bracket. Very interesting. I, I feel like we have some commentary here. What's up, Evan? Let's do it. I think the Dogecoin one, I, I think Dogecoin is an underhanded chance to win this tournament. That would be my, like, sleeper pick in there. And I know Dogecoin is Dogecoin, but, like, it's kind of faded off a little bit. But Greg is behind it. Oh. He's like, got a Tesla. I mean, I, there's not many people Tesla. out here that I would not want to match up against. Well, there actually, there are a bunch of people. Is that Greg's pick? 
Yeah, Greg took Doge. Oh King. shit! See, had I had I known that that was Greg's pick, I I may have like thought twice about putting on for because obviously she survives as Ashley is a. I don't know that that Ashley even has that as her pick. I just know that it's on here. Anybody could have taken it, I guess. But I'm assuming that she has it, uh, yeah, and I, I could be does. wrong about that. But she does. she does. Yeah, if I okay. I, I remember having it. Okay, so It'll it's going to be though. Greg against Ashley. That's that's fantastic. Any other ones that stuck out to you? Well, I'll say the real interesting thing here for me is DWAC. And I didn't realize how crazy this split was going to be. Um, mm. But here, give me give me your best guess. What do you think the split is, people that pick DWAC versus AMD? Versus AMD? Yeah, in that first round. It's DWAC, AMD. Oh, shit. Um, you, you, you mean like, like percentage-wise? Yeah, like percentage-wise. Dude, it's. I bet it's a lot closer than I than uh than uh people think. Um, Give me a guess. Fuck. Okay. Um. Sixty forty. I'm gonna say seventy five twenty five A and D. Anyone else have any guesses? That's far. Anyone else? I think A and D. It could be fifty fifty, but AMD I. Is a fan, but it, AMD is a uh, is a baller ass stock. I'm, I mean, like, oh, it's an amazing company that, compared to for, a business D-Walk that could go D-Walk. back to ten. Exclu- yeah, exclusive has AMD. Exclusive uh, trades has AMD. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so right now the split is seventy seven and a half percent have chosen AMD. Boom. Oh, okay, so it's way further out than I thought. Okay. For, first run knockout, just like Ark will be out, uh, Divac will be out too. I think you, <laughs> I think you mispronounced Ark with Sark. Should we look at the Ark Sark split? Yes, uh, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's move on. No, let's not move on. I, I don't. I don't think it's that bad. I haven't really looked at it just yet uh, with the updated data. Actually, I think we did look at it briefly, but I think it's pretty even. Or no, we'll see. Uh, well, quick interjection here. If anyone wants to know what we are talking about, it is our brackets for Market Madness. Get involved. Get the chance to win 10K. Click the link in the uh, in the nest above. The, 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 it's in the Jumbotron. It's March Madness. The link it's is March Madness. On, onlyfans.com slash vote. I got to give you guys some kudos. The the layout and everything, like the design and how you guys have like arranged this, like I can tell just any honestly anybody can tell when they start compiling the bracket that you didn't just slap like blue chips with with garbage stocks like you've had it set up to where certain companies eventually meet up and it's it's very intentional. It's obviously uh, intentional. Yeah, just very just, well done. Thank you. Just for background, I spent 2 months on this uh, before Holy we shit. The last Okay. Week. Yeah, this has been uh, this has been in the making for a while. Awesome. Uh, by it the shows. Way, right now, not a huge split. Um, ARKK has sixty three percent, and uh, what's it called? Sark has thirty seven. Yeah, oh, first round, bro. First round exit. Wow, Gurg. Anything? Any comments? Gurg Capital is backing Sark. So <laughs> you don't need to worry. So Gurg Capital's hundred thousand. Is Tuttle people involved are not here? Tuttle, Tuttle, maybe we'll have to get them on a space to talk about it. I don't have them involved right now. It's Gerg backing Sark. Yeah, I should form an alliance with him. Yeah, you should. All right, uh, fake. I find the bracket super interesting. Any other matchups you'd be curious about to know what numbers people have picked? Um, I want to. Well, let's see. Um, I want to know what I want to know what Shopify and um. Yeah. Actually, no, I don't. I want to. I want to assume. Let's let's just no, assume no, that no, Amazon. No, no. That, that's I want boring. Amazon and Nvidia. I no, want no, that, that one. That, that's boring. Do you want gold? What's this out of point? So, because then, then I can go and relay this back to traders to traders paradise because I know okay. that's his play. Amazon, Amazon, and Nvidia have potential to meet in the Sweet Sixteen. Yep. And I am looking at that one right now. Let's pull that up. Uh, by the way, it just takes me a second. I'm I'm literally combing through raw data here. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it looks like crazy over there. Yeah, so it's not the fastest process. Um, no all right, here we go. Amazon, mm-hmm. Nvidia. So there's it, basically there's 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 multiple stocks that can be in this one. It can be Amazon. It can be Nvidia. It could be Square. It could be Palantir. It could be SE. It could be Shop. Right. This is a this is a pretty large one, but 
of those ones that are there, Amazon currently has, I think, the lead. Oh, let's see. So Amazon has, doing some quick maths. Uh, okay. Amazon has 31% of the vote in the Sweet 16. And NVIDIA is second place, I believe, with... Uh, nope. NVIDIA is actually first. NVIDIA has... Let's go. NVIDIA has 33% of the vote in the Sweet 16. Amazon has 31%. And then after that, you have PLTR, I believe. PLTR. Mm -hmm. And these are much smaller. These are way smaller. Those two have a majority. Uh, PLTR has... Gerg, I know you picked PLTR to make a run here. PLTR has 8.7% in the Sweet 16. And then SE actually got SE actually got like a decent amount of votes. It got right around the same. It got 8.7%. And then Shop got a little bit less, like seven, six and a half percent. And then Square, actually, let's check Square. This is the last one. Square got right around seven percent. So 31, 33% for Amazon, NVIDIA, and then just a lot of like 8%, 8%, 7%, kind of like filling out the rest of it. Little, A few went to O as well. Some people mm -hmm. didn't. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's going to be exciting to, to see how it play out. Love it. Love it. So I want to get some other pitches in here. Fake, anything else you want to you put in here? Um, Bitcoin and Ethereum is the only other one that I'm like really excited about. Uh, next to like obviously the, the winner of that going on against Board Ape Yacht Club, yeah, I think that's I think that it's inevitable that Board Ape Yacht Club is uh in the final uh four. You think so? No, no, in the elite eight, the elite eight. I think Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin can go really, really far as well. But Board Ape Yacht Club against against the Crypto King is going to be a fun one because you got the the most hyped up. Uh, uh, NFT project against the big dog in crypto. That's so right, a fun one. Right now in that Bitcoin and Ethereum matchup, which would potentially be happening also in the Sweet 16. Uh, right now we have doing some maths again. Uh, two, seven, uh, Bitcoin, 35.6% of the brackets are picking Bitcoin to win in the Sweet 16. Ethereum has definitely a smaller number i feel like than that yeah eth has oh you know what i uh, stand corrected uh so 35.6 percent for bitcoin and eth has 38.9 percent. so actually more people have eth going and then after that you have a few for flux and then you have uh a few for you know not not a few but a handful for mutant ape and then the Wall Street Bulls actually got a bunch of their bulls to fill out brackets. Did they? Yeah. So they're also pulling like a decent, eh, like an okay percentage, like mm -hmm. nothing crazy, but they got like, like of that matchup, there's 10% of people that filled out brackets that have the bulls going. Yeah. Dude, I think that that's another thing to get into. Like, I feel like they're another underdog just because like, there's a bunch of these large, very engaged communities, and Wall Street Bulls is 100% one of them. I don't know if anyone has seen their Instagram. I am a big fan of it. But, like, they're fully involved in this. So like, that's, I, I I'm that's glad that Evan said that, there. because if there's one knock I'll give to my bracket, it's this. And that I, uh, you know, upon initially filling it out, I definitely failed to appreciate that probably the large majority of people that fill, fill this out don't necessarily possess sort of the like the core timeline awareness that most of m most of like the people in here have at least to like the people that are speaking right like most people that filled this out probably don't know that unique unicorns is Aaron's project most people don't know that she survives is Ashley's project so they're not voting on like like oh this is one of our this is one of our you know this is one of our people we got we got to get them we got to get them through um I voted on I voted with that in mind which is why I have the Mutant 8 Yacht, 8 Yacht Club losing to Unicorns, which looks crazy on a timeline or on a uh, on a bracket. But um, that was what I was thinking was that, like, you know, 
there were there were going to be enough votes from people that were aware of the the personalities that were that were like up for grabs on here. But I don't think that's going to be the case. At least not with all of them. The Greg Doge thing, like, yeah, you can offer me that one just because he's just such a such a presence uh, and he's so known. But the other ones, like, I just don't know. It'll be interesting to see it play out. All right, let's let's. So we've really dove into the back end here. Let's get a couple other the people to kind of talk about their picks, and we can mm-hmm. analyze some of that through it as well. Andrew, Thank you guys. Yeah, of course, Faith. It's great having you on. Um, Andrew, you want to go next? Talk a little bit about what your pick is and why why you think it's gonna make a run here. Absolutely. So my pick for this contest is GBTC. So I think GBTC is definitely a sleeper in here. I hear everyone talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum. GBTC is essentially just the trust version of Bitcoin. And what I think is so cool about this one is that Grayscale, the company that runs this thing, and this is just like some cool information here, their number one priority right now is getting this thing transitioned from a trust to an ETF. Right now, this thing trades at about a 20% discount to the NAV. So it's basically like you're owning Bitcoin And then you're owning this additional call option to potentially get that 20% bump when this thing transitions over to an ETF. And I think there's a high likelihood that it happens because GBTC, they are like the OGs in the game of, you know, creating a product around Bitcoin. And there is a deadline. They should be getting their yay or nay from the SEC. I believe it's in July. So that one is looking awesome. And then just in terms of where it is in the bracket, So I think it's in a good spot within the bracket because it is not next to all of the other crypto and NFT stuff. It's next to a bunch of the other ETFs. So it's with like the spies and like the ESFs and all that vanilla stuff. So I have GBTC here making a run and then some other stuff that I think could run on this bracket. I do have the board Ape Yacht Club going pretty deep. I really have a lot of these... Uh, crypto and then really just like meme stocks like DWAC I have that one going deep as well just because I think for everyone that absolutely like hates that ticker I think there's like some stand like at his computer like ready to vote for that thing see I have that one making it pretty far and then I have Tesla going pretty far as well but eventually losing to the board ape yacht club in the final four there huh you, yep. want, you want to hear some stats on that final four? Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. So let's take a look. This is the final four where we would have a go from Tesla and a whole bunch of others, Board Ape. So let's look. Um, gosh, this is a lot of random data. Sometimes I have to like find the column, like figure out which one it is. But I think it's this one because it's BTC... Board Ape. No, maybe it's the one after. Here, uh, it must be this Tesla one. Tesla and Amazon and Board Apes. There we go. Okay. Got the column. And uh, let's take a look. There's a reminder, there's a lot of stuff in here. So probably most things aren't going to take a huge amount. Uh, I don't see a ton of Board Apes. So this one's super diversified Final Four. Um, so this is how many people have Board Ape winning the Final Four. It is a small number. Uh, this is going to be. 2.7 percent uh, oh, that's nuts that's like such yeah. a good asset it's probably going to be like the winner of this competition it's going to be like some horrible stock that like everyone on fintwit is bag holding so they're well, all like voting for it well well here's the thing there's 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 actually a, a massive variety coming from the final four on that side bitcoin only has seven percent right so you have bitcoin what does tesla have oh he's on the right side let me yeah. Let me take a look at Ethereum real quick. Okay, Ethereum's the same thing. Ethereum has seven and a half percent. Like Gov, it, it, Nvidia actually might have the most here. Uh, after Tesla, I'm assuming I haven't looked at Tesla yet. Gov, Nvidia, yeah. Has this has this March Madness bracket made its way to Wall Street bets on Reddit? I don't think it has. Could you get it? Because if because if it has, uh, I mean, you're already seeing data though, so it, it more more than likely has not. Okay. Could you get it there? I mean, somebody can go and post it. Uh, my thing was like, if it went viral in there and people decided that okay, we're gonna choose like this sixteen and we're gonna we're gonna blast this thing, 
I like out through, you know, God knows how far. Yeah, I can post it. Sure. That would be sick if you could post sure. it. Yeah, anybody here can too. All right. Um, so Tesla, yeah, Tesla's definitely the leader here, but not not a massive amount. Uh Tesla has tw- okay, it's decent. Twenty six percent of that final four. Um that's pretty solid. Twenty six, actually. I feel like comparing that to the Bitcoin and Ethereum ones. Ethereum had more than Bitcoin, right? Uh, slight. They were both at like eight percent, seven eight percent. Wow, twenty six percent. I'm not fully surprised. Is Palance here second place on that side? Want to hear? Uh, uh, let's see. Actually, the Wall Street Bulls have almost six percent of the final four. Uh, Palantir, no. Palantir has a very small amount of people um, taking it to win the final four. Palantir has very small amount. It's uh, a few percent. Interesting. A little surprised. Yeah, uh, it's definitely interesting to to really see these data sets. But yeah, Tesla leading Ooh. with. Sorry. What? Continue. Yeah. I was gonna say. Uh, I mean, we gotta take my. I would love to see where Apple's at. So it's taking us to another side. Okay, um, so let's bring it back to Andrew for a second. So, Andrew, um, talk me through again this in, in this this first round matchup. You know why why are people? I guess you kind of talk through uh, GBTC versus gold in the first round, but right after that, it could hit very likely VOO. How do you feel about that? So, I think GBTC has got an easy first couple of rounds here. I think I'm in like the best spot in the bracket because I think yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, first I'm going against Barrett Gold, and it's literally like you know, the original pet rock, like asset that hasn't moved anywhere in like a decade versus the Bitcoin trust. So I think we got a good shot at that one. And then VOO, that one is just so vanilla. Like who's going to vote? Like the asset's got to make people feel something. It's got to be like that cultish asset. No, no, no. It would investing. Boring is better. But this isn't investing though. I think we're... Yeah, that's the issue. I think we're having, I think you're right. but I, I don't think this. That's how this this uh, final four I mean, matchup works. So, so many, yeah. Oh no, no, no! I think the first couple of rounds, Spy, Vo, and Kikiki will win easily, because almost everyone and their grandma knows what it is, and the other small names are not that popular. I, on you, I feel like Spy and QQQ yep. in those areas are in their level of their own. Where I think they have a good chance of going far in this. The other one no, no, no. I'm talking about the first three, four rounds. They can easily be the competitors because can there's be not you? enough awareness on those names. Like, everyone treats Pi as the S&P 500. People don't mention SPX. They mention SPY. Why? Because they believe that it's S&P 500, so... Hey, how did, how did SPY do last year, Gav? I don't remember if those ETFs were in the bracket last year. Do you have hey. that data? I mean, last year, Palantir won, so... Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I don't really see, like, those broad-based ETFs, like, they're just so boring. I can't really see people, like, wanting to, uh, you know, win the 10 Gs with those, but who knows? It's definitely a wild time. So, any other matchups that, you know, you kind of mulled over, Andrew, any, any other underdogs you took? Underdogs? Let's see... So I tried to go for whatever had like the most cultish following. There were some things that I looked at on here that I'm like, I've never even heard of this asset before. Like MFers. Like I could see like some asset that I've never even heard of just making an absolute Cinderella run in this tournament. But for me, no real big upsets. I have like Tesla on my final four. I got the Bored Apes. I got GBTC and then DWAC. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, well, excited to get into it. Um, if there's any other matchups you uh, want to know about, feel free to just let me know or uh, feel free to contribute contribute to the conversation uh, as we keep it rolling. Um, Jay, I think we're going to come on over to you. And I actually want to ask you, since I have you on here, so just so everyone knows, this week is vote is is like not, well, this week is filling out your bracket. So there's no voting going on just yet. It's just inputting basically like hey here's what i want in my bracket here's what i think is going to win next week is polling we're going to do polls every single day of the week we're going to have like six polls a day seven polls a day we're going to do spaces as well and we're going to have people basically each side like for example jay's backing am uh amazon and then we have you know person backing square although i think the person backing square is not a person who speaks on spaces very often 
Uh, if I had to guess, yeah, it's Trust Fund Terry. But, like, basically, Jay would get on Spaces and, like, make his case. And if the other person was a person who talked on Spaces, they would make their case. So, uh, Jay, while I have you, I'd love to have you speak now. And then I also want to ask you if you're free on Monday at, like, in a space starting at 8, like, around, like, maybe, like, 8.30 to speak about Amazon. Hey. Um, yeah, happy to um, speak. Um, my Monday mornings are always pretty jammed. But if we could do it at... It would be at, at uh, It would be at, it, night, like, 8.30 p.m. Oh, that absolutely could. Yeah, at night, I, absolutely I could. I was... I know you guys do the morning space, but yeah, absolutely. Monday works. Um, I won't give the full Amazon pitch today, but obviously it's been a, a name near and dear to my heart for many years. Um, the story is a little bit different. Um, not going to spend a lot of time on it today, but you obviously you have the e-commerce business, which is underappreciated. Um, you know, given that it was a pandemic beneficiary, you have web services, which should trade at a premium to market, but even at a pure multiple, um, looking at private and public comps, you know, that business should be worth, you know, 900 billion, you know, e-commerce should be worth, you know, at least, um, one to 1.2 trillion and you have advertising, which should do 40 to 50 billion. You can say, you know, even conservatively, that's two, 200, $300 billion business, you know, taking out the, the debt, adding back cash and dividing, by 560 million shares gets you as some of the parts uh, target of, you know, a little bit over 4,200. Um, and it's a bellwether for hedge funds. It's a bellwether for um, individual investors. A lot of the big cap fang names have sold off with the market because of duration, rate risk. I think that that will continue, but I think over a longer period of time, um, it's a place to that you could part capital. Um and I think, you know, as a lot of name recognition, you know, this is not, you know, this is not less focused on investing, more focused on, you know, the, who's going to win the brackets. And I think it has a lot of name recognition. I think people are starting starting to understand that it's really uh, some of the parts of three different businesses that have different value drivers, right? You have a value driver that's driven by uh, recovery, opening, um, advertising revenue going up, you know, in key categories. You have a, a sector that's more based on, you know, cloud growth and spend, which is AWS. And you have a business that, you know, has been taking share from retail for many years that, you know, is coming off a high. Um, and the blend of that is a compelling portfolio. So, um, you know, it can go into a lot more depth on that one on Monday. But in terms of brackets, I think there are a lot of interesting things on here. I appreciate you guys reaching out. Um, should be really exciting. Um, a lot of companies, I think, have a lot of name recognition, but I'd love to see this year if people learned from 2020, 2021 and focus on on uh, on tickers that have more longevity in them. So, you know, a couple brackets that uh, interest me just at a high level are like this Twitter and Coinbase one. Um, I think you have like some similar investors in both. Um that uh, I think could be very interesting to, to see if you have the information on. Um, I also think that, you know, uranium is, is something I've been spending a lot of time on since last year. I think this CCJ, I can't really see the name that it's competing with, but I'd love to see what people think of CCJ. Um, on the ETFs, I'd love to see what people think of VOO versus XLE. Um, you know, we were long energy XLE back in 2020. And now, you know, it seems like everyone and their mom is uh, is now an energy bull from a growth bro. So I'd love to see what, what sentiment is uh, on those two. And I'd love to see, you know, just the sentiment on the pandemic beneficiaries, which is the SARC versus ARC. I think that would be a really interesting matchup to see uh, what's interesting there. I think AMD DWOC also is interesting. I think most people don't realize that, you know, Patrick Orlando didn't really follow SPAC rules and speaking to Trump before the SPAC was set up. So, you know, I think DWOC has a potential of either being, you know, hit by the, the pipe or going back to 10 if uh, they have to find another way to take that company public. Um, so I think that could be super interesting. And then on the left side of the brackets, I think SC Redfin has the same type of investor. So I think like the Bahama Benz of the world, I think that would be an interesting matchup. I think Facebook, Airbnb will be interesting because Airbnb is obviously a recovery play and Facebook's become a value company given what's happened with IDFA and Google doing the same thing as Apple that, you know, that could have some serious fall. Um, 
And I think um, Upstart BA could be interesting because I think Upstart could actually blow up given the delinquency data people are seeing on the consumer lending front. Um, and BA has its own issues with <sighs> their Boeing 737 MAX, but I think is it's a lower vol, higher sharp ratio name. So there are a lot of really interesting setups. I can see you guys put a lot of time into it. Um, but uh, you know, in a couple of those names, if you have any uh, any underlying data, I'd be happy to take it, take a look at it. Yeah, any any matchup specifically you want to hear about? Yeah, uh, the Twitter versus Coinbase to start. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we definitely thought that one was super interesting. Um, I'll ask you kind of ahead of time. Uh, what do you what do you think? How do you think that one is uh, falling out right now? You know, I think people are really disillusioned with Twitter. I know we're all using it as an app. I think that, you know, crypto has, has come back a little bit. And I think, you know, it's really a, you know, I think the street understands that margins have to come down in Coinbase quite a bit, but they view it as having a large TAM. So I think it'll be pretty close because just the fact that people use Twitter, I think you might have some legacy Twitter bulls. Um, but I think there's been some disillusion, you know, I think it'd be, I think it could be pretty close. I think it'd be pretty close to 50, 50 there. So this was definitely one of the more surprising ones, but what I will say is the thing that you kind of have to keep in mind with this is we also have backers for each one of these, right? Uh, for most of them. And, oh, I see. I didn't know that. Right. So, so like you're kind of the backer for Amazon, right? So you put out to people, Hey, you know, go pick mine. Right. And so other people put out, so definitely we have a full affiliates page. It's on the website. Um, that everyone can check out. And what I recommend with that is right to take a look at the affiliates because you just always kind of got to keep in mind right, who's backing what. So I think the affiliates kind of tilted this one a bit. Now, it's not a blowout by any means, but right now, Coin does have 65% of the vote. Uh, that makes sense. And who's the backer again for Coin? Chris Peruna. Got it. Oh, of course. Yeah, he's a big guy. Um, interesting. I'd love to see what his thesis is. Yeah, uh, well, he's definitely, we're going to be doing all that on Spaces um, next week. So I'm literally DMing people now trying to get these set up. But basically, all weeknights, APM EST, we're pretty much going to just run shop and uh, discuss all that stuff. So really, really good stuff there, Jay. Um, I'm going to get the other two uh, pitches in that are on here too. And we can always circle back. And I really want everyone, you know, feel free to kind of interject if somebody else's bracket you think is a little funky or there's any matchups you want to hear about. All right. Uh, Dividend Hero, my guy, what's up? Hey, what's going on, Gav? I'm good, dude. Uh, excited to have you on and looking forward to hearing about your pick. Yeah, I'm stoked. I'm stoked that we're doing this for, for a second year in a row. It's, uh, you know, we've all got we've all got bigger audiences now and I'm excited to pull more Twitter together. And it was a great it was a great time last year. And um, I'm excited to uh, see how it shakes out this year. Um you know, it's fun to sit here and talk about all the hypotheticals, but everything's a little different once those polls are live and you start getting some retweets involved. And, you know, like you mentioned, the the, uh, the people backing the different assets, the influencers, that can have a lot of impact on the outcome. So um, I mean, I'm excited to see uh, who, who else we can pull into this side of Twitter and, and generate some interest. Absolutely. So, so walk us through a little bit of your backing on it. Yeah, absolutely. So my asset is Realty Income. Oh, uh, full fraud knockout. <laughs> uh. Yep, it is up against Palantir. Um, Gav yeah, Gav, bro, bro, I, I would quit already. Yeah, gave me a real, real tough matchup. Um, again, up against last year's winner, so it's definitely an uphill battle. Um, but you know, it, it's fun. I'll go all out. I'm, I'm not afraid to. Uh, for a first round knockout, but I'm definitely good on swinging. Um, so it is. Uh, it, um, not sure how familiar everybody is with Realty Income, but they are a dividend stock. They're actually known as the monthly dividend payer. If you go to their website, it literally says it on the, their top banner. They're very proud of that. Um, so they are a a REIT, a real estate company, um, and they own buildings and lease them out um, under long-term net lease agreements. So you're thinking like 10 to 20 years. Um, so their, their business model really is set up 
perfectly for um, paying monthly dividends. Um, they collect mo- rent monthly, and uh, so they're able to pay out monthly. Um, one really interesting um, thing that I found when I was digging into real estate income earlier was that AMC is one of their top tenants. Um, and I actually have AMC going pretty far in my brackets. Um, so that's like my second AM pick, I guess. Um, but real to income, um, a lot of their, their, some of their top tenants are like Walgreens, Dollar General, 7-Eleven, Dollar Tree, um, FedEx, CVS, Home Depot, um, even Amazon, it says, wow. Um, but, but really you think of any large company that needs real estate, um, they're one of the biggest players in the market. So um, it's a name I really like. It's a name I hold. Um, I add on on dips and things like that. Um, so when we when we were talking earlier about the a boring stock making it making it a little far and it making a little bit of noise, if it can get some following behind it, I'm hoping that um, this one this one can come out um, at least maybe to the second or third round. I'd be really happy. Honestly, even past the first round, I'd be pretty stoked. Um, you know, Palantir, definitely a, a controversial name, a controversial stock. Um, has been in the headlines plenty. Um, you know, involved with all kinds of government work and Kathy Wood and, and this and that. And, you know, I like to think of Palantir as, as a really on the grid type of name. Like they are grid to the max. And if anybody follows me, you know that I'm all about being off the grid. So Palantir does not suit me very well at all times. Um, but in all honesty, um, it's a really popular name, and there's a lot of accounts that are kind of come out and back it. So, um, and then after that, if it were to advance to the next round, it would have to face off against the winner of Amazon and Square, um, which is a very interesting matchup. I actually do have Square um, pulling off the upset in that one. I do apologize to our our previous speaker. Um, I didn't catch your name, but. Um, yeah, do do apologize, Jay. <laughs> Jay nice to meet you. Oh, Jay. you don't have to apologize. <laughs> I try to keep up with names. I like to get to know people. Um, I do have Square pulling off the upset there, um, just for fun. I mean, I kind of settle my bracket pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, realty income, boring name, does real estate. Um, a name you might have heard about, you might not have heard about, but they're involved in. Uh, people's day-to-day lives more than more than you might imagine very interesting so if you had to guess right now what do you think the split is of people that picked palantir versus O to win the first round oh, it's like 95 to 5 towards, it, Pal- 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 towards palantir it is currently 75 25 palantir okay that's a lot better than i expected obviously um yeah, I uh... and in fact, in fact, if you want to hear a bit of an interesting stat right here, uh, I believe I saw this earlier. And let me just double check. There are oh, okay. I thought there were more. Did you pick O to win it all? I did not pick O to win. Somebody it all. did. Somebody picked O to win it Somebody all. Somebody picked realty income to win the whole dang thing. That yeah. is impressive. So it did. It did get a vote for to win. I thought it had like three or four, which I thought was interesting. Wow! Interesting. It only has it only has one. Um, yeah. Well, I want to find that person. So, so it was 25... uh, Sumit Roy. Do you know who I'm talking about? No. He's the CEO of Realty Income. Okay. Oh, yeah. That that is that sounds familiar. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So twenty five percent of people have it making out of the first. How do you, how many do you think have it making out of the second? None. Well, obviously at least one. But so going up again, Amazon, PLTR, and I'll tell you, we've got we've got some hopefuls in here. We've got wow. some hopefuls because four percent of people have it making it past Amazon, Square, and Palantir. That is going to take some backing, and I need to find those people, <laughs> and we need to. Uh... We need to uh, group together on, on on Monday when those brackets open because uh, it's gonna need it's gonna need all the all the help it can get. It that that that, that is really good to know though that uh, there are some people that are oh, hopeful. Man. 
All so, right. Bad, I, I, bad, I'm... bad news. Just realized that that sample size is tainted. Two of them are test brackets that I submitted. Oh god! But it's still you still got some backers. Stop! Stop the count! Stop the count! All right. Anyways, I'm, um, I get a lot of dividend people. <laughs> hey, I'm all for it. Hey, first, first round. You know, for, for what it's worth, after. the dividend the dividend name should outperform this year. You know the the reeds, the altrias of the world. You know, given the vol we're about to see, I know people may may not think they're interesting, but it is what it is. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, interested to see how recent market sentiment plays into these uh, these investing picks. I mean, you've definitely got some heavy some heavy matchups. Like I was looking at um, Celsius versus PayPal. It's like, well, I don't I don't think anybody likes either of those names very much right now um, because at least you know past couple of months have just been awful for both those names. Or you know, Nvidia versus uh, versus Shopify. A lot of a lot of bag holders, for sure. Um, even SE and Redfin. I mean, you know, so re- recent recent price action is definitely driving a lot of sentiment in these names. Yeah, there were some good. conversations about divorce when those two names came up on Twitter. So. <laughs> oh no! Well, and as we all know, price changes, price changes sentiment, and this whole bracket, you 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 would assume a lot of the votes are going to be based on market sentiment. So. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, some some outperformance um, here in the here in the short run from some dividend stocks might give realty income a nice little boost. Um, at least give me give us dividend investors a little bit more hope. I love it. I love it, man. All right, let's get Raul's pitch in here too, and then we can kind of break down some more of these uh, these matchups. So, Raul, you're back in a big dog in this. A lot of people have picked it to win. Talk us through it. Yeah, um, I think I kind of mentioned some of the reasons yesterday, but um, I won't dive too deep. It looks like there's some more uh, emphasis for deep dives next week. But um, for me, I like the company Google um, for a few different reasons, the optionality, the pricing power, the free cash flow yield, given current macro sentiment, I think. Right now it's ran a little bit, but you know, the 2,500 range, it's trading at, I don't know, 18 to 20 times sales, if I'm not mistaking. Um, pretty good CAGR, great balance sheet. Obviously, they generate a ton of cash or multi-legged, um, similar to Amazon with Jay's pick. Um, as I said yesterday, you know, I don't look at this as a search engine or just tech company, more of a AI platform with a lot of sticky products and services. Um, and I think it's set to continue growing. Um you know, through their reinvestment in AI, cloud, as well as continuing to grow their advertising uh, kind of business, which I think um, people, you know, don't realize that it, I think can continue growing, um, especially given kind of the recent woes at uh, Facebook. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my pick. And I, and I kind of echo uh, Jay's sentiment. You know, I hope, I'm hoping, you know, like some of these names, I don't recognize them. Some of these are totally broken businesses like Dwalk. Like, sure, it's fun as a cult, but I mean, it's not a business, right? Like it, it probably shouldn't even be a public company. Um, and I'm hoping obviously people are going to vote with fun and like, you know, kind of whatever they kind of love or follow, but kind of seeing the conditions now versus 2020, I think it's a good time to, you know, make sure you understand kind of what's going on and what makes sense. Right. Because some of these picks, I mean, are like Jay mentioned, like pretty good long-term businesses, reasonably priced and can kind of show um, you know good growth at a reasonable price. Um, and I think it's more important now than ever to be critical of what you're buying. So um, yeah, that's my pick. Obviously, I'll get more into it um, uh, when we kind of have those spaces. Uh, I think we already talked about the bracket a bit, but I did have one matchup I was pretty curious on because... I find them obviously valuation wise they're they're at different stages in their in their kind of career or kind of company graph with Facebook and Airbnb. But I'm curious how people voted on that because um, you know, I think and like Airbnb can put up a tough matchup and I do like that business and I do think it's a long term winner, especially given Facebook's recent weakness. I'm curious how that matchup's being kind of voted on and stuff. It is a super interesting one. Uh, what do you think it's at right now? I would go with Airbnb. Um, I don't know, maybe fifty-five, forty-five would be my guess. 
TSR, what do you think it's at? My guess is Facebook's uh, probably leading the vote. TSDR um, has Airbnb? I, I have Airbnb. It was, was, was my pick. Um, That's a good pick. Yeah, I, 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 I love Airbnb. I'm I, – I'm big into so you know before I started trading I you know savvied myself a uh, in it <laughs> a wannabe I mean I've always been you know the entrepreneurial type but I always wanted to you know invent something or be an entrepreneur and just the idea of like fintech and Uber and now Airbnb these businesses like uh, Airbnb a ho- ho- hotel business that owns no hotels right or it owns o- o- owns no buildings uh uber a taxi company that owns no cars uh fintech you know a a banking industry that owns no banks or you know uh, banks buildings you know actual structures right it's always been very interesting nft is an entire industry that owns absolutely nothing and then then there's (laughs) nfts that are nothing and own own nothing (laughs) so they're not real aren't you (laughs) <laughs> millennials an age group that owns well okay continue <laughs> yeah so uh, millennials an age group that spends lots of money but has none um anyways um so i mean just that in general i i absolutely love that that kind of uh you know innovator entrepreneurial type of business and i think there'll be many more to come you know if you can figure out what that next industry industry is that can um like that you know airbnb like that uber like you know a lot of these fintechs um i think you could you know end up being a, a very very rich man or woman um if you can find, find the next thing my you guess is the, the vote is probably yeah. at 61 percent facebook 39 percent airbnb is my guess Ooh, speak, speaking of Airbnb, Evan, have you decided? I'm in. You're in? I can book it? Uh, you can book it. I'm in. Let's fucking go. I need to get, I need to get tickets to the Bitcoin conference, but yeah. I'm well, in. I'm sure Asset Dash will take care of that, right? I'll make it work. I'll get there. All right. But yeah. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm booking this thing, okay? I'm, I, yeah, this is supported send, by the way you saying you're in, so I have you listen, in now. Send send the Venmo request. Let's get it over with, and I can't back out. Let's fucking go. All right. Uh, by the way, upset of the hour at the moment, Airbnb is polling fifty two point eight percent. So I called it. Yeah, I mean, play devil's advocate a little bit. Um, I know you know there's a lot of risk associated with with Facebook's you know business and their future with all this you know all spending on, on the metaverse you know going forward, but at its uh, at its PE ratio right now, it seems it is pretty cheap and pretty attractive to to a lot of people. So I mean, a little devil's You're advocate. Both companies to you. What was that? You're backing both. No, 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 no. I was, I was just playing, playing a little. No, he's playing devil's devil. advocate. Yeah. We encourage that. Yeah. So I, 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 people, I mean, Facebook's, I, you can't even say like Facebook's the more, rec- I mean, it is the more recognizable name than Airbnb, but, you know, um, I don't know. Airbnb, Airbnb is an awesome company, I think. In a, in like this, in a popularity contest, um, I think Airbnb is more potentially more popular, more likable. They're definitely more likable. What's their second round matchup, Wolf? For so, Airbnb, if Airbnb makes it past the first, they will then match up with either Celsius or PayPal. Oh, that's oh crazy. no, Celsius is a first round knockout too. So, yeah. do you want to? Know, do you want to? Do you want to know who's pulling higher in the first round, Celsius or PayPal? Obviously, yes. PayPal. I think there's no way Celsius is even right. closer. All right, number is. I'll go PayPal at 66%. I will go with Cel- 69. 69 for PayPal, at least. Celsius leading 56.4%. Bro, are you with serious? 56. Anyone else want to weigh in? Uh, right. Yeah, we, we, didn't, we need a recount. Yeah, Current, yeah, recount. Currently, stop PayPal. the vote. Stop the count. Hey, yeah, guys, the polling is definitely, there's something going on here with the ballots. Yeah, did you guys choose the Dominion? Currently, PayPal is leading with 62.3%. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, okay. okay. 62.3% for PayPal, 37.7%. So, yeah. is, 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 Jonah, is Jonah backing uh, Celsius? So, Jonah told me he's backing Celsius, and then he changed his mind after I'd already published this and said he wants to back Upstart. So, I guess him and Danny are both backing Upstart, and nobody's backing Celsius, so we'll see what happens. He just got mad because I put them up against each other in the second round. He's got more followers than all of us combined, so... <laughs> I mean, 
I hear. I hear. Uh, all right. Did you want to know? Somebody wanted to know the second round, though, right? Whichever one made it out of that, the kind of the the round of 32 potential for uh, PayPal, Celsius, <clears throat> uh, the rest.